So we met on a property tour uh, downtown Austin, and we got to talking. And what really it's really captured my attention was hearing your story on coming to this country and getting into real estate because I've been in real estate for a few years now and I have not met anyone quite with your your story. So please tell us a little bit on your on your background on and your your story. It was really so nice meeting you and learning that you're doing the podcast and you love meeting different people. So um yeah, here's my story. I came to the U.S. Um, almost two years ago. So in January 2024, it will be two years since I'm here. I came here with my husband, just two of us, knowing Texas in Austin. Um, how we got here, so there is a program run by U.S. government, uh, which is called Visa Diversity Program. And uh, its aim is to bring people of different nationalities to the U.S. So how it works, it's basically um, just a random selection. So you apply, you can apply every year. There is a certain enrollment period. Um, we did that. We did that for the first and only time because I know people doing that every year for like five, seven, ten years in a row. So we did it just once and uh, we were selected. <laughs> Actually, it was my husband who was lucky. And it was in June 2020 when COVID just, just recently started. So everything was shut down. No embassy work, no agencies in the US that are dealing with the process worked. So we waited for about a year and a half before we finally got our interview because so when you are selected, it doesn't mean that you immediately go to the U.S. Uh, of course, you need to go through the verification process, through the interview process, and they make sure that you have enough finances to take care of yourself here. So we got to our interview in September 2021, successfully passed it, and in January 2022, we arrived here in the U.S. in Austin. So this is just a little, a little bit of background. Wow. So was there any other that was an option or was Austin it? So we could go with any state, any city we wanted. At first, we considered California, we considered uh, New York City, uh, what else, Miami, and I think also Nevada, that was my husband's idea, <laughs> crazy enough. Uh, but yeah, so my thing was that I wanted to stay in a warm place. I am really dealing bad with, with cold weather. And we have really cold winters in Ukraine, so I I wanted some climate, and so we we stopped at considering warmer states. And as it was during COVID, a lot of companies were moving to Austin, and Austin was developing pretty fastly. And my husband is a software engineer, so tech industry was of particular interest to us and at that time i also worked uh, in tech so um we decided well looks like the city um has great perspectives it's developing so why not trying let's just let's go there and we don't like it well we can move anytime yeah yeah i totally get that i have a very similar story and one thing you said that caught my attention when we even met uh in person was that you came here from the Ukraine and uh, and one thing that you know my very first thought with that was like I wonder how the real estate kind of process works in your country you know especially now that you kind of know how it works here in Texas yeah any major, di any major differences or similarities that you see so I was not working in real estate in Ukraine so this is a totally new career for me in a totally new country. <laughs> so I'm, I'm crazy enough to, to start everything from the scratch. So um, 
As for Ukraine, I can speak only from more consumer point of view. Uh, but of course, I can touch on some some differences, some maybe similarities. But I think generally, it's it's really different. So we don't have title companies in Ukraine. Everything is done uh, through the attorneys. So when you want to buy real estate, you of course you have a choice to do it by yourself or to hire a real estate agent to help you. And as for the agent's commission, in most cases, it is paid. Uh, so a portion of it is paid by the seller to his agent and buyers pay to their agent. So I think this is one of the differences because here so far, the buyer's agent commission is typically covered by the listing side, right? And um, another thing, we don't have any kind of MLS database. So uh, basically when an agent has a listing, he just advertises it on different platforms. We have some similar like Zillow and yeah, that's the main advertisement agents do. And of course they reach out to their uh, sphere to tell about this listing, but we don't have any kind of MLS database. And this is great to have it here because it gives so much more exposure and the way real estate agents cooperate here, it's also really great. To be a real estate agent in Ukraine, you don't need a license. So basically you can wake up one day and <laughs> decide I'm doing real estate from now and here you go. So you don't need to, to have a license. You don't need to to go through any renewal courses, nothing like that. Um, yeah, I think that's that's the, the main points. You said a lot, and I really want to touch on some things. The very first thing being, because you just made a lot of people happy, especially about <laughs> the commission part, because uh, yeah. I don't know if you have been keeping up with uh, the headlines. There's a big lawsuit right now with the National Association of Workers. And everything you said, as far as like the setup, is exactly what the case is about and what people are trying to bring up, right? So you said the seller pays their agent a commission and the buyer right. pays their agent their commission. Correct. The money ultimately is coming from which side? So for the seller has his agent, he pays his agent. The buyer have their agent, they pay their agent. But like all the money goes from buyer, right? Because seller does not have any money unless has buyers who are ready and willing to, to buy. So like ultimately, yes, it comes from the buyer's side. Okay, so even in the Ukraine, it still comes ultimately from the buyer's side. Yes, technically, yes. Okay. So it's, it's, it's very, it's kind of, I feel like kind of lost in the words a little bit on how like the money flow works, right? Because mm -hmm. here, I mean, you could say it differently, but it's ultimately very simply, even though the sellers from the listing side, you know, they charge a 6% commission and that's split between the buyer and the seller's agent. It's still coming from the, like the buyer side, the loan that they're getting from the bank. Right. So uh, it's just funny how it's kind of just tr almost translated that it comes from the individual parties when it's not really the case. Does that make sense? Right. Right. So right. I, I find that interesting. And the commission is not, what's the commission over there? I over was there? not, I was not, well, approximately the same, I would say, but the price of real estate is, is much lower. <laughs> Well, as the cost of, of living as well. So, so here it's like three to six percent that I've seen as like a industry average. Would you say it's the same or a little bit less? More or less the same, I would say. But it depends, you know, here as well as in Ukraine, commission, commission is always negotiable, negotiable. right? Yeah. So whatever you negotiate, that's that's what you have. But yeah, approximately... Well, in most cases, 
more or less the same. Sometimes the seller can cover both commission, like the, the buyer's agent commission can come from the listing side, but you know, it depends, not, not in all cases. Right. So sometimes it can be that the seller covers, uh, covers both sides in the seller from, from the proceeds, right? Uh, but in the majority of cases, I would say it's, so the buyer pay, pays their, his agent and the seller, uh, pay their agent. It can, can get a little confusing <laughs> yeah, I know. When, <laughs> in, in, in your mind. Like I know in our minds, it's probably super clear, but explain it sometimes can be a little confusing. It's almost something you have to draw out so you can point and, and show like, okay, buyer, seller, this is where the money coming from. And then maybe a little bit easier, but moving on, moving on, uh, something I want to talk about, which was like the MLS, mm -hmm. right? Uh, in the Ukraine, there's not a central system like that, but no. there is a, some type of database, not a database. It's more like, um, a web platform websites. Yeah. It's more like websites where you just advertise kind of Zillow. Uh, we have here, so we have same platforms in Ukraine, but it's, it's not a database. Interesting. That's still the real estate or maybe the attorneys are the ones inputting the data so you can see it on the online. It's not, it's not that it, as we have here on the MLS. So just imagine you have a listing on Zillow and the amount of information you have about this property. The same you will have on uh, on the website like that in Ukraine. So for the attorneys who are basically helping to close the transaction, there is a state database, like public records, if you will. But it's yeah, so it's not a kind of, of MLS. It's just so both the, the agents who are helping their buyers when they are looking for properties, they will just use a platform like Zillow. I saw that you went to the Austin Board of Realtors or like a Ukraine, um, I, I saw Ukraine in the title. And could you talk a little bit more on that? And maybe I guess that was like, see like what kind of a community you have here in Austin around that? Yeah, sure. So about that event, um, it was organized by Austin Board of Realtors. So we had the vice president of uh, Ukrainian Real Estate Professional Association coming to Austin. Uh, so basically he came to the US to participate in the NAR uh, conference uh, in California, but he decided to visit a couple of other cities and Austin was among them. So he told a, a little bit about the state of, about the state, uh, currently in Ukraine, because, you know, um, people think that since you have war there, everything just stopped and people are not buying, selling. Of course, it's much slower than it, it used to be. But again, not in all parts of Ukraine, you have military um, actions, you have like battlefield, right? Uh, so still real estate is is going on. People are, are buying, selling properties. He touched on that and he also has uh, a couple of uh, charity projects uh, that he leads to help both real estate professionals who suffered the war, help them, help their families, and also other people that again suffered, suffered from, from, from war. Uh, yeah, and I was basically uh, serving as, as his interpreter. I was translating. Uh, his English is not very good uh, so far. Yeah, and I was helping with that part. And it was it was really to be there, to be helping with that and telling people about what's going on. So yeah, we had we had um, an, a lot of questions because you know when you hear about what's going on in some country for the first time, of course, you, you're interested to, to learn more. Also, you asked about Ukrainian community here in Austin. It's pretty big. I don't know how, how many people are exactly, but I believe, well, 
around five, 600 families maybe. So we had a lot of people arrived here since the war started. There is a program for Ukrainians called United for Ukrainians that allows uh, people to come here, those uh, seeking for um, like a temporary place to, um, to live. Uh, and um, the Ukrainian community, we do a lot of events. We, uh, we have an organization here, again, helping, helping um, efforts in Ukraine. So basically everything we do now is focused on helping Ukraine, helping those who, uh, who are victims of war and helping, just helping to, just start helping to uh, make our victory closer. I had no idea, no idea uh, that we have such a strong community here and it's growing. Yeah, we do. Well, basically every week we have um, some small rallies in front of the Capitol. We are just like, we are the Americans who have questions about what's going on in Ukraine to give them a little, a little bit of information. And, you know, people are stopping asking questions. So it's just good to be there to, to talk to people and to, to let them know what's going on and, and how they can help if they want. Did you speak and were f fluent in English back home? I was learning English at school. Then, well, my like formal education is actually English Ukrainian translation. So I learned, yeah, I learned in about 15 years. But then, you know, when I graduated from college, I was not speaking English on, on the daily basis. I was never, I never. So when I came here, of course, I had some challenges, some difficulties, because when you don't speak the language, when you're not using the language on the daily basis, uh, you just forget a lot of things. Well, learning the language is one thing, but using the language is totally different thing. So when I came here, I did face a lot of challenges. And I remember when I just went to real estate school and I got my, you know, these real estate books you need to, uh, to read. And I opened my, that first book, I was translating every other word. word. And oh. yeah. That's my point, I was, that's point I'm trying to make because English was my first language and it was hard for me to study and do the courses and do the tests. So I can't even imagine. It was hard, you know? very hard. <laughs> oh yeah. And from, just curious, from beginning like your very first day of class to getting your license and passing the tests, what was that time frame? It took me about five months uh, to... Fast. You were every day well, time. Yeah, it was like a full-time job. Every day I woke up in the morning and I read books. I watched a lot of YouTube video videos because, you know, I, I didn't understand a lot of things, just simple things that Americans deal with every day that Americans used to, I didn't know what's that. Yeah. So I had to, to study like 10 times more. <laughs> that, that was hard, but I did it. And I'm really, I'm proud of myself. You should be. You should be. I, I'm proud of myself for passing too, but you, even more so because you were having to translate and kind of relearn some things and it was definitely not as easy. So that's why I really wanted to bring it up to make a point of that. Um, yeah. And I passed my test on the first try. Wow. Yeah. That must have been such a good feeling. <laughs> such a good feeling. <laughs> it is. It's not, it's not, it's not easy. I have all the, uh, you get licensed in Texas, we have the most hours, and it's just a lot more involved. Uh, I think I have one or two questions before we'll kind of wrap things up. So right now in your business, who are you working with more? Are you working with more buyers or sellers or people looking for leases? As I'm, well, I'm, I'm a new agent, right? I'm just entering my second year, so I still do a lot of leases. And I think this is a good way to get in front of people to show them that you can do things, that they can trust you, that you can help them. I haven't worked with the sellers yet, so buyers and leases. And I get a lot of my clients from, from the Ukrainian community. 
as we are pretty close and I'm an active participant of the community, of the events. I'm volunteering at almost all events. I help with the organization. So just, just, just do what I can. Um, yeah. So, and I think that the agents start from the point they, they work with, with buyers and there is a natural switch to, to the sellers. Absolutely. I think that's very, uh, common, common path, especially if you're starting in a new city, exactly the same. I'm originally from California and I've been working, uh, with leases and buyers in the very beginning and, uh, we'll transition. That's the goal. Uh, is to work with a combination of buyers and sellers, right? What's something, this is probably like my final question before uh, we call it, is like, I don't know, maybe like a takeaway that when you want people to, like when it comes to like, I'm really big on personal branding, right? So like something, uh, some of your core values that you really believe in, so that way people can, uh, can, can understand a little bit more about you and how you kind of want, how you do business. Talking about core values, I would say honesty. Uh, this is the thing I I strongly believe in. I believe all agents should work that way. Transparency. Then I just love helping people. Like I'm. This is such a good feeling when you can see that you helped someone to change something in their life, to bring them to to a new place. This is just, just really great. And, um, so yeah, just this willingness to help and my clients needs are always above everything. And again, this is something I think all agents should, should stick to and should believe in. Um, so yeah, these are some core things I'm focusing. Uh, on and also I really love to learn and I really love to focus on education because I needed to understand a lot of things by myself and uh, I like to educate whether these the tenants, buyers or like any client. I, I love telling them of the process uh, just so they don't go just blindly and just, I don't know, sign this and that, and do this and that. But I believe it is very important so people understand what they are doing. What I took from that was great customer service. You are a lifelong learner. That's a great skill to have in this industry because every year things are changing, right? And I know sometimes in the industry, uh, once you get all the education in the beginning done you really don't take the time to continue to learn and keep up with uh, the market as 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 we shift to these different market cycles so that's wonderful to hear and i really get a really strong passion for helping people very much like yourself that immigrated here that probably are in a new city and can feel alone right and, and I know sometimes it's very difficult to ask for help and it's just giving off that message again and again, like, Hey, we're here to help. And we we're, we're coming from a very authentic place because I think ultimately the people who build a long-term business, especially in real estate are very customer focused, believe in great customer service. Totally agree. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, it was wonderful speaking with you. I had such a good time learning more a little bit about you and a little bit on, you know, your personal story on how you got to this point. And I know if um, the awesome thing about doing video like this is now we have like a little record in, in a point in our history to see where we're at. And then this time next year, or maybe this time in six months, we can see where we're at and see the progress. And I think that's like the beauty of, con of doing content like this. So we can kind of see how our, our growth more than anything. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It was great talking to you. It's, it's a great opportunity to, to tell a little bit about myself, about the country I come from. And 
about all those amazing people we have. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. And with that, we'll sign off. <laughs>